Hey folks, this is Gary Creeley with Creeley Blades, and I wanted to bring to you just a quick overview of the Mako PG series. So the Mako project was something that kick-started. Um, a lot of you might be familiar with the CPM Rex 121 project that we did, but um, the PG series is an attempt to be able to keep up with demand uh, on what I believe to be a pretty compelling design. This design was a working back and forth with Michael Christie. We were looking for a little EDC to uh, put uh, Rex 121, uh, Rex 121 EDC. But uh, I've refined this design a little bit, changed some things, number of holes, the different things, slight changes in the shape. But what you have is a roughly seven inch overall with about a little better than two and a half inch blade. Uh, I care to give it more handle than blade. This is actually a custom ground one in Rex, CPM Rex 121. This is a PG series. And as you can see, there's not a great deal of difference between these blades, um, you know, looking at them together like this. Uh, the, the idea behind this is that you can get a small EDC in a really high grade steel. So 20 CV and 3V are kind of my starting steels and, and there'll be other steels. Eventually the Rex 121 will find its way into this line. So uh, at the time of this recording, uh, the knife alone is $180 in either 3V or 20 CV. And then I have an in the pocket sheath. Now, originally on the customs, I have a Joe Fu in the pocket sheath, which is fantastic. Um, but cost-wise and trying to keep, you know, trying to keep things affordable. This is a factory-made one, but it's a U.S. factory. Uh, and the big thing was the clip. Uh, I, uh, the titanium clip was probably the most expensive part of the other sheath. And um, this is an Ulti clip, but it still keeps that kind of deep carry sense. If you buy one of these, just a little quick tip. Uh, when you put it in, you want the top of the sheath kind of come to the bottom of the last screw. You don't want to push it in too much further than that. But I saw I saw one guy take a picture of the knife and it was like that. Uh, so he's not getting it. Eventually, as it breaks in, it, it will work its way down. But that's, that's where that's supposed to be. Um, just a couple things about the design choices. I talked a little bit about uh, the handle to blade ratio and, that, and that's important. Uh, another thing is that the blades on the PG series are just a shade larger than the scales. Now, I don't know if I go so far to call it a shadow box, but in order to get the hardware, there's there's a little bit of tolerance in that hardware. And to get that to be able to line up easily for people, if they take the scales off or whatever, um, I needed it. I needed the blade to be just ever so slightly bigger. Um, and then the hardware is just basic. That's an 832 screw. It is a 330 second driver. So this is stuff that you can get at your local hardware store and both the driver and that. You don't need any special tools. Um, as Creely Blades goes, form does follow function. I, I want these to be affordable. I want them to cut. And to that end, you know, I'm using hardware that is easy to manage. The geometry here, uh, I call out uh, eight thousandths on the edge before it sharpens. So depending, you know, I sharpen these each myself by hand. Uh, it will either be me or Doug uh, sharpening these. And uh, it, it, it might climb up a little bit more than eight thousandths on the edge, but still aggressive for this style of knife. Um, I would call this, uh, I don't know if I called it a mid tech cause I didn't grind the bevels, but I would call it a bespoke production knife. These are small batch. And there's some really interesting steels that are going to be coming up. Uh, I wanted to talk just a little bit about the way the blade is produced and how it differs, differs from a custom. On my customs, uh, on all my models, in fact, even if I'm only making a one-off or a two-off, I'll still have it laser cut or, or water jetted um, first. Because uh, then I can repeat it if I really like it. And uh, and then next, uh, it comes back to my shop and I clean up, I clean up the perimeter. 
Um, that's a step some knife companies don't do, but there's just a little bit of kerf and it just bugs me enough that I want to get rid of it. So I clean it up. So there's a little bit of tolerance and variation in there uh, when I clean it up. Then I send it out to heat treat. The two heat treaters that I use are either Peter's Heat Treat in, I believe it's in Meadville, Pennsylvania, or Boss Heat Treat, which is part of Buck. They both do fantastic work. I, you know, one or the other is every bit as good. So um, that is uh, that is this. I also call out, you know, there's a lot of talk about heat treat, like, oh, somebody has the best heat treater, somebody has the worst heat treat. For the most part, these are vacuum furnaces and they do exactly what you tell them to do. And so I call out a little harder. I call these out at 62 Rockwell. So, um, you know, some manufacturers for various reasons of, of tooling and other things will sometimes call some of these steels out at lower hardness levels. So that's the PG series. Um, down the road, you know, um, you can, you'll be able to buy scales separately if you want to change out the color or swap them around. Uh, I think I'll do like special runs of scale sometimes. Like I know I have some inline carbon fiber I want to do and some other things. So this is the overview of the PG series. Uh, if you're thinking about one, uh, this, this will sort of help you. The base ones here in the 3V and the 20CV, uh, they start at 180 with a sheath. It's 220. A sheath alone is $50, but only 40 with a knife purchase. So, and they're not actually available on their own yet because I barely have enough for the knives that I have. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me through the comments or through Instagram. Um, I, try, I try to get around to all the comments, uh, sometimes email. Emails are actually a little harder for me to get around to. Some guys prefer that. But uh, don't be offended if I don't immediately get back or I miss it. Just hit me up again or we'll, we'll connect one way or the other. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope this helps uh, understand a little bit about what this is and what this project is. And to all of you who have purchased my knives till now, and there's a growing number of you, I really appreciate it. It couldn't happen without you. Have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.